Good morning. It is March 17th, and I had a great time watching Carmen last night. I'm showing you the front page of metopera.org. I believe this is, okay, so this performance will be available, I guess, to start until 3.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, it's two hours, 46 minutes. It's on there. If you click it, it just goes straight to a video. There's no fancy controls. It does play, pause, etc. So you can listen to it at your own leisure until 7.30, well, okay, 3.30 p.m. just to start. And then at 7.30 p.m. tonight, they're going to have La Boheme. So let's look at the <laughs> synopsis of La Boheme. There's... I'm just going to nutshell it. Just It's based on a book, and I don't remember if it's called La Vie Boheme, and that might sound familiar to you if you've ever seen the Broadway show Rent, which, of course, cribbed its best music from Puccini, the composer of this opera. There's basically two sets of lovers, um, one which gets set up in the first act, another which kind of already existed, but there's some rough spots. So the two women are Mimi and Musetta. The two men are Marcello and Rodolfo. And Rodolfo kind of meets cute with Mimi in the tenement they live in. And there's a, you know, light a little candle. That might sound familiar to you if you know Rent. Um, and they fall in love, yada, yada, let's go to the cafe. Where uh, uh, Marcello's lover, ex-lover, whatever, Musetta, is having a grand old time with her rich older lover. The thing is, of course, she's just using him for his money. Here's the issue. Mimi, and it will happen at various times, she coughs. She's got tuberculosis. So this is an interesting choice given a lot of people are socially distancing due to infectious disease that could kill. You have something that happens to your lungs and having difficulty breathing. Okay, that said, there's going to be another opera involving a main character dying by tuberculosis as well, La Traviata, later this week. We'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, the whole point is that uh, Rodolfo and Marcello more or less basically push the women off saying, you know, we are poor artists. artists. They basically have no money. Their girls are just not going to have a good life of it if they stick with them. Um, go take rich lovers, essentially. Um, this is La Vie Boheme, the bohemian life. It's kind of the hippie lifestyle of urban Paris in the late 19th century, mid to late 19th century. Anyway, the way the opera ends, you can read the synopsis. I'll give the link. But the way the opera ends, of course, is Mimi dies. You know, I keep it's, it's just going to keep ending up this way for most of the operas. A main character will die. In this case, she's not murdered. She dies from tuberculosis. In Rent, the Mimi there, she has AIDS, and a lot of other characters also have AIDS. They, I think they only show Mimi in this opera having tuberculosis, but it was pretty endemic in the urban population um, in Paris and other European cities, and a lot of great artists were dying themselves of tuberculosis, um, novelists, painters, poets, etc. Uh, it was not a hygienic time. Tuberculosis is an infectious disease. And it was kind of known getting sunlight, having a healthy lifestyle in terms of getting fed. Even if you had TB, you could last a long time. Does that sound like something? Um, but even rich people would eventually die from the disease, uh, the well, okay, we don't need to go into how tuberculosis gets guilty. You can look that up if you care. In any case, in Rent, Mimi kind of comes back to the life at the end, and, and they kill off another character in her stead, Angel, which I always thought was cheap. That's just, I, I just don't like Rent, okay? Uh, I've, I've seen it a couple times live on Broadway, and I thought the sign language interpreters were better actors than the people on stage. Okay. Okay. Um, but going back to La Boheme, when I saw this, and I did see this at the Metropolitan Opera, this is, by the way, one of the most performed operas in the world, and I'm going to prove it to you. There is a site called Opera Base, which records performances around the world. Uh, you can pick the country, whatever, and find out. I'm picking for the world from 2004 to 2019, 
what are the most performed operas. Um, so we haven't seen La Traviata. That will be coming up later this week. And then Die Zauberflöte is the magic flute. Um, that's not on for this week, but we'll see. Uh, it can be a little longer depending on what version. It's often, um, the magic flute is often translated into uh, the language of whatever country it is being performed in. I have seen many English language versions, but there's I've seen Norwegian versions and that kind of thing. But you can see here, Carmen is number three, La Bohème is number four in number of performances over this 15 year period. Um, it's hardly surprising. It's very, very popular because of the music. When I went to see La Bohème, and yes, I knew what the story was ahead of time, and yes, I knew Mimi was going to die. And even if you didn't know, the moment she coughed, you knew she was going to die. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. Like, you get it in a dramatic movie now, the person's probably going to die of cancer, or, you know, or AIDS, depending on what year the movie was made. Okay, something is wrong. The, there's going to be some kind of condition that kills them, whatever. So I thought it was stupid. The men saying, oh, yes, you know, we're being noble. Hey, you ladies, go get some money. And then, oh, our hearts and yada, yada. And I'm just like, this is, this is so bogus. Choices have consequences, guys, men and women both. But Puccini is the most manipulative composer I've ever dealt with. I'm sitting there, I'm just, you know, sitting there and I'm like, this is bullshit. Um, you know, the plot, I, I watched soap operas. <laughs> you can see why they're called soap operas. They're over the top. They're not really believable. It's hard for me to feel anything for that. It's just, it's, to a certain extent, it's just too stupid. That said, when Mimi dies at the end, uh, <laughs> Puccini does this phrase, and I think it's only three notes. And the moment I heard those three notes, oh, yeah, my God, oh, she's dead. Okay, so music can do that to you. I've had that experience before with Broadway musicals, so they miss Rob. Oh my God, the very end of it, I'm just like, for the last half hour, just screaming and snot, and you know, it's beautiful. Um, so given the stress levels everybody has, here's a hanky warning. Um, so like Carmen, she gets murdered and whatever, whatever. But I am telling you, the music at the very end, in the last act of this opera, you yeah, you might be crying, um, just from the music. Because it is, as I said, the, the emotions, and this is true for a lot of opera, the emotions is often, are often exaggerated uh, to get it across. Now, the people who are performing this know they're doing it for HD, so their performance may be a little more restrained compared to regular opera where you're playing to a large house and there are people way in the back. Um, but always the opera is about the music and there is a reason Puccini is up here. So we have Verdi, Mozart, Bizet, Puccini, and then Puccini with Tosca, um, and then Mozart again. Uh, La Nozze di Figaro, Marriage of Figaro is my favorite. Uh, opera, but it, that one's a little long. It's about uh, four hours long, so um, we'll see if they do that in the second week, if they do a second week. Uh, there was a lot of uh, traffic on the Met Opera site last night, and they were asking people who could to do it on their Roku device, Apple or Amazon, so we do have Met Opera on demand on our Roku. Um, I actually put it, I had it on my, I put it on my Kindle and had it playing my Kindle. Yeah, I know that's not the best um, sound quality, but you know, I'm actually a subscriber and so I'm already paying for this and that's fine. That's fine. Um, I want to support the Met Opera. Love it. Um, and I'm going to write to them, uh, to propose if they do a second week, which operas they should do. Um, so, so far we've gotten through, as I said, we've gotten through Carmen and now it's La Boheme. So I hope to see you tonight. Bye-bye.